the Iran agreement. Uh, yesterday, no, excuse me, I guess it was this morning. This mor- uh, only 40 minutes ago, some people were reporting what I think you're about to say. Is this Tom Carper? It is Tom Carper. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Tom Carper came out with a, um, uh, with a statement, why I support the Iran nuclear deal. And um, I, I don't know if this is... Um, if this is a, a huge surprise, but I think it's certainly important. Uh, he starts off by saying, this August, I did something that many critics of the Iran deal have yet to do. I read it. <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. And uh, so that's excellent. The statement's excellent. But also, I think he is a really important get. Um, he's probably one of the more conservative, you know, he's, a, he's still a, a true blue, if you can use that term, new Democrat. You know what I mean? Uh, he's he's more conservative than a lot of the senators in there. And the other senator from Delaware, Coons, is currently on the fence leaning towards supporting it, but hasn't come out fully in support. And, you know, so I think for some of the others like that, some of these other kind of from the more moderate wing, if we want to call it that, um, I think having him come forward is a big deal and it helps a lot. Yeah, I mean, let's go through uh, some of those folks, because, yeah, when you have a guy like uh, Coons, and I think there's reason to believe Coons, but, but this opens up a certain amount of, of, of oxygen uh, for him as well to do this, or I should say space. Now, yep. uh, right now, there are now 30 confirmed, publicly acknowledged votes, essentially, in favor of the agreement, um, which, uh, which uh, at, at the very least means that President Obama is only four votes away in the Senate from a guaranteed um, uh, veto-proof veto, I guess. Yeah, there's, I should there's really say, only two numbers that matter, 34 and 41. Right. And now we should also say, in the House, uh, it's quite clear that a, um, a, a veto would be upheld. But there's something about going to the Senate, and the president has the, has the option as to who he sends it back to after he vetoes. Um, but I think he'd rather do it in the Senate because it's more well, prominent. Yeah, I mean, the Senate's more prominent. The Senate, Senate, you know, with treaties and other things, plays a much bigger role in foreign policy than does the House. Uh, it, it's more, you know, and obviously with all these guys running for president and with just the fact that they, people representing the state get a lot more press attention, too, I think culturally it's more important in terms of getting people to accept that this is a good deal a very good deal, having people come out in favor of it. And, so, you know, we're sadly in a place where, you know, almost depending, it doesn't even matter what the vote is. It could be this or defunding Planned Parenthood or a variety of other things, and you get almost every Republican aboard. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you have really, and, and depending on the vote, you there's about a half dozen Republicans that are ever in play on anything. Um, you know, and so uh, we, we're going to deal with them voting as a block, no matter what, because that's the mentality that exists in that party at this point, where the Democrats, uh, you know, run for the hills are just the opposite too often. Frankly, you know, I would like something in the middle, which is you don't have to, to be a robot and not look at things before voting for them and supporting them. But you also shouldn't be scared away just because there's some loudmouths, all of whom supported the, the war in Iraq, who are opposed to it, you know. And so it, it's good to see, you know, some of the folks that are coming out in favor of it. And, and again, that's the Carper is one of the ones I would name there is, is a really important one. So Now, there are only two Democrats who have publicly uh, said that they will vote down the deal, and that's Menendez and Chuck Schumer. Right. And Chuck and Schumer. one who's likely to not be in prison in a year. Right, exactly. And Chuck Schumer, I got to say, like when he started when he started to try and whip uh, for uh, support of his position, he sort of got wrapped pretty hard around the knuckles. I mean, uh, and and I, you know, I think to a lot for for a large extent, uh, to a large extent, I should say, and for a, no, a large number of people and even people who sort of I don't think would have taken this position otherwise. There was a lot of people who said this guy does not really deserve it's not even a question of deserve this is not the type of guy you want in leadership because chuck schumer chuck schumer in his heart let's say may believe this deal is bad i don't happen to i don't know if i buy that i don't think there's anything in any any republican his, his, any, his, his reasoning doesn't even make sense right i don't i, I, I mean good, he had a good reason I, I i would sit there and listen to it but he hasn't said anything that's actually even common sense yet and, you know, I, I have other issues with Chuck Schumer. Let's leave them aside for the moment. My understanding yeah. is that the uh, there was a lot of people in the de- uh, the Democratic caucus, in the Senate caucus, who were like, this is not what a, a leader does. What a leader does is sacrifices 
um, you know, some of their, uh, you know, their own, because, you know, Chuck Schumer's not in danger of, of not being reelected, or at least maybe, maybe he feels he might be, but uh, it needs that cash. And frankly, he's got more to worry about somebody challenging him from the left, considering, you know, what Zephyr Tichet was able to accomplish versus Cuomo with almost no money. That's right. I mean, that's, that's right. That's, that should be a bigger worry of Chuck Schumer than losing in New York ever to a Republican for the Senate, but, but he hasn't gotten that message. And and so um, there was a lot of people in the in the Democratic Senate who were like, look, in this type of situation, you don't make your uh, the your caucus take the heat. You take some of the heat off them. That's what a leader does. It's opened up space for them uh, to vote. And so he was basically saying, like, hey, I need you guys uh, to vote against this deal because I have a. Uh, a very uh, rapidly pro uh, Likudnik right wing Israel uh, donor class um, uh, that you know I need, and so I need you guys to do my bidding. That's not the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to no, work and, the and, other and way. Actually, I would say you know it also it should speak to people about whether they want this guy as their leader because one one of the real big pains uh, in in the rear for Democrats over the last fifteen you know however many years more than that frankly is that often they've had leaders from states where they, where they were more conservative than the caucus as a whole. That was Tom Daschle, certainly. And for a while, Nevada has been moving steadily to the left with a growing Hispanic population, and I think Clark County around uh, Las Vegas may be the fastest-growing county in the country, and lots of people are moving there and, and the rest. So it's changed somewhat with Harry Reid. But for a while there, Reid was in a similar situation from a much more conservative state, and here we're going to get somebody from a state that is really one of the part of the heart of you know the Democratic coalition, one of the anchors you can say of of it certainly in electorally in the presidential races, and and then you've got this guy who you know on two on two on two very major issues. There's a lot of smaller issues that fall underneath the kind of overall line of Wall Street, but when it comes to both Wall Street and foreign policy, you know you don't have somebody. So it's sort of like you know what's the value of it. Yeah, so it's it's like we're it's almost like we're doing the same thing. The the benefit of getting somebody from New York is supposed to be all right. We've got somebody who can be progressive as they want to be and and vote their conscience and stand up and fight for everything they believe in without worrying about causing trouble for themselves and, back home in South Dakota. And to and to Harry Reid's credit, I mean, this is a guy who is personally um, uh, anti-choice. He is a you know anti-abortion personally. Yeah, yeah. Has never ever, as far as I can tell ever projected that on to his caucus has never in any way, um, you know, and I, I, I don't know if it's because he's a Mormon and he has that faith, uh, or, and that's part of his faith, or he it was uh, politically expedient in, uh, in, in Nevada to... From things uh, to, I read, I was led to believe it's because of his Mormon faith that he was anti judge But also being from a—he was came from, you know, f- you know, famously this small town, Searchlight, I believe it's called, Nevada. Yeah. You know, and, and so he was from a very rural area, so he, for a while, was a complete—you know, he was one of the most pro-NRA— Senators, and it was after Newtown. He was one of the ones who, who, like Bob Casey and some others who had been that way, who broke with them and supported. I mean, he ended up voting against the bill because he, procedurally he had to do that right. to bring it up again. But he supported the whole thing, including the assault weapons ban. And so he's moved more to the left, I think, and, and, and embraced some more things as, as time has gone on. And, you know, that could partially be his personal evolution. It could be the state moving to the left. I mean, you know, pick your, your whatever you think it is. Or, and, and, and I think. I think, uh, frankly, I think it's also a function of like knowing where his caucus is and and going right. in that direction. I mean, uh, you know, I think I think you know at one point somebody's going to write a book about Harry Reid, and we're going to have a much clearer sense of, uh, of sort of how shrewd this guy was and how he basically. I mean, I think you know this is the thing that I think people don't necessarily understand about uh, about leadership uh, in these caucuses. Uh, is that the that a good leader basically tries to squeeze everything out of his caucus or her caucus at, that they can, and right. and they don't put heat on their caucus members, uh, um, you know, for the most part, um, if they are in a a rock and a hard place. Yeah, and, no, and I think he's in a, a very good. I mean, I, I had questions a number of years ago, but I think for at least. During the Obama administration, he's been very good 
And, you know, and, and that's the thing. I, I agree with you. I just was making the point that for a while there, he was put in a tough position just because of his state, yep. you know, and, and, and so was Dashiell, you know, and, and we finally had somebody who was not, or at least theoretically, and now you've got a guy who's completely, at, you know, on Wall Street, he's certainly to the right of the caucus. You could say maybe he's in the mainstream, but he's sort of to the right of that mainstream. Um, and on, on, you know, he's not even in the mainstream when it comes to foreign policy. He's completely out, out in the middle of nowhere with, you know, in the end, what will probably be at most a half dozen Democrats. Right. And so I think fewer. I, I think you're right about that. I think it's going to be fewer. I mean, right now we have, uh, you know, um, uh, there are four. We're, we're four away from uh, getting that uh, uh, stopping any type of veto override. And I think you're going to see like um, uh, Merkley. Uh, and uh, uh, Barbara Mikulski and uh, Michael Bennett from Colorado and uh, and Manchin, I think uh, my sense is, and from what I've read, are are likely uh, yeses, and that's how you get to thirty four. And then right. you have uh, people like Cory Booker is one of the big names out there that people are waiting to see where he goes because he gets a lot of his money from those same people, uh, yep. Shmuley Botek or whatever that that uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> that guy's name. I'm not kidding. I mean, apparently they, they, they're no, good I buddies. I talking about. I'm just laughing. What a joke uh, unbelievable is. joke. Um, and if if a guy like Cory Booker can vote um, uh, basically in support of the agreement, I think that's going to make a big difference for a lot of people. And then you see like people like Blumenthal and Cantwell and, and Cardin. That, that, um, that um, you know, the Carpers come out for it, you'll get Coons. But right. I think if Tim Keene has officially said yes, I know he's leaning yes, that can help you get Mark Warner. Yep. I, I think, you know, there's there's still a lot of, of people that uh, end up on the, on the, you know, so I think there's very much a shot at getting to that 41 so that uh, you can stop anything McConnell wants to do to try to, and, and we're, we're done. Right. Hopefully.